This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. You all ready for this? Mm -hmm. Dun 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 no. dun. No. Nope. Just this stop. This is a sham. Welcome to DBL. Happy Wednesday, everybody. I'm still getting suited up on that. Look at you. Look at you. Al's, Al's pocket game is like getting tight. He can do different types of pocket squares. That's the game getting tight. Yes. Uh -oh. Yeah, she's. Uh, <laughs> cool. That was a, a young dad to an older mom. <laughs> and I'm just stuffing <laughs> napkins in at this point. So I need to work on I'm going to send you some YouTube links. You're going to get. You're gonna go down the rabbit hole. I It'll tried a little bit and then I fell off. I fell <laughs> off. Just like everything else in my life. All right. <laughs> oh Expect a slim down at the Oscars next month, and that's not body shaming. To help with falling ratings, the Oscars are cutting eight categories from the on-air broadcast. Awards for film editing, sound, makeup, and short film will be presented. <laughs> that's our sound guy. Wow. <laughs> At, oh, I get it. Yeah. I get it. An hour before the Oscars go to air, those speeches will then be edited and featured during the live broadcast. Another one that um, is being cut is score. What? For the movie. I actually oh, enjoy no. that one because score. so many scores are related to the movie, right? Yeah. Honestly, like near the, oh, far what movie? Where Titanic. Uh, right? So I'm how are you gonna cut out score? Like, hey, like you act like we were gonna stump her with that question. <laughs> no, I wanted her to get it. I wanted to say like because people don't think like score, that's not a big deal. It's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Interesting. No, it's, oh, it's that true. is original song. That will still be a category. Okay, so I screwed up the whole thing. Yeah, so your your point didn't make any sense. Does anyone else <laughs> feel bad about makeup? I like the makeup because there's such good makeup yes. work. You am I right? Listen, we you cannot Dre? act like the people who are in front of the camera are the most important Amen. people. If it weren't for everybody that y'all don't see, right. this stuff don't happen. We look awful. Like it's ridiculous. It really is and it really goes to show you I understand that it's the star power and everyone uh, thinks that we're like watching to see particular um, actors and actresses and that's very true but I think that for people who are really into the idea of how the film is made or films are made this is a, a big miss. Yeah, think of Marlon Brando and Godfather and the makeup and prosthetics. They're not pulling them. They're just going to edit know. them and put them back but in like to make it shorter. Would, would it be better, because I know that there's some people that really focus on, like, for example, like Black Panther, obviously Avatar, the make, makeup almost was everything. Yeah. And there are people that are really into that and discuss this online, and you can check the algorithm to see how many people are checking for that kind of stuff. Would it be better to have, like, an uh, the Oscars of sound the Oscars and have its own kind of separate program maybe smaller and go for a more niche audience that's more committed rather than people that are generally like oh they went for score or just go for people that are really committed and but are going at to the watch. end of the day it's numbers and it's money and it's eyeballs right. you know like yeah. we appreciate things like that but how many people out there want to see Jim Jones win for best grip which Jim Jones <laughs> the the grip guy <laughs> I love that. Well, you know, there's there are, you know, very uh, specific industry awards mm -hmm. that, you know, aren't necessarily televised on national television. But I think the whole point is that you're not just in front of your direct peers, you're in front of the world and you're see everyone seeing you get this accolade. So it really is the best of the best. And I think they should all be celebrated yeah. and also shown in the same way. I think it's a matter of respect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. I think there would be no show without those people, yeah. right? right? Without the people behind the camera, there would not be on but camera. But the good people. news is, if they don't air, you could just say that you won. <laughs> like, no one's going to go to your house. You could be like, hey, another Oscar There's this year. So weird. Cool. Let me see the, Let me see it. <laughs> I can't, man, a COVID, no one can go to the house. <laughs> All over the mantle, though. You gotta trust. Al's got it figured out already. All right, we're getting a first look at the new Kardashian reality show that's coming to Hulu in April. Hulu. Check it out. Hulu. Wow, 
that's a dramatic change from the one on E. It's it is. It's the exact same. Oh, it is. Adam. That's right. It was. <laughs> it really is the exact same. I thought it was different. No. What did you think was different about it? That's Just like it didn't. It seemed like a little bit more adult. It no. didn't seem like they. Because they, usually there would be cutaways to the crying and the fights and somebody throwing something. It just seemed like this is us kind of 2.0, like the adult version of us. It's really the detailed iota of their lives that for some reason I, myself included, are so glued to, and that's just following up. What I love that I saw was that Courtney's getting her due of falling in love and not having a Scott Disick, which to her was just a lot of chaos, drama, and needed sobriety, in my opinion. And you see Kris Jenner really crying because her daughter was in a lot of pain, and you don't see that emotion from Kris a lot or Courtney. So I'm looking forward to seeing that relationship blossom and there be good news for Courtney. I really want there to be good news for her and Chloe. Do and people want to watch a reality show in all honesty? Let's be honest. That is just all good news, right? That's all. Oh, what a great relationship. Do they want a Scott Disick to come in and be kind of the villain? Well, they have a Kanye. Quote unquote. Kanye's going to make Kanye, things really interesting. Do shows on show? need that yeah, to succeed? Yeah, but Kanye's not on the show. But he's going to. They're going to reference him, talk about him. I mean, he's going to do things that will impact that family. And I'm Tristan assuming. Tristan will too. It's a good point. Will it be okay? There needs to be a, a villain. At some and point. we don't know if that's the story. Right. But right. then, is there is a villain really a villain if they're not on the show? Because mm. then you're just getting one side of it. You know, I think what makes so many of these reality TV shows work is that you're seeing the exchange, you're seeing all the different sides. You might start the episode on one person's side and end the episode on someone else's. So I don't know if a villain's a villain if they're not on the show physically. Mm, interesting. How about as opposed to E and Hulu? You could stream, you could drop a lot of bombs, yeah, you could yeah. go a little further. A little you think we're going to see but a little bit they more? Do you want that for their image? Do you want to have this image that you've curated for decades now to then be uncensored and kind of lose a little bit of that mystique because they are maybe speaking in a way that people haven't heard them speak before? Maybe it's a little bit more of who they are or not. I don't know who they are really, but I mean, they are putting on something for the camera, right? Yeah, I think they're adding a little drama. I think you're going to see a, a, what I really hope to see is an arc of a romance between Travis and Courtney. I know not many. Are, are you going to watch this? Yeah. And wh who do you think is the demo for this? Do you think the people that watched? Yeah, previously? it's the people who grew up with it, right? That like followed Kim and found her interesting and kind of got into the lives and like, for some reason, I'm really invested in that relationship. So and is I hope it just it comfort food at this point and you don't really need the drama? You're just kind of watching it? It's more like I've invested a lot of years and I want to see them happy. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but they've successfully continued for like 15 plus years. It's an amazing run. It's I'm, an amazing run. I feel like they don't run. get their due because people kind of hate I them. I think they do. Like how many people have been the, the, that aren't the Simpsons? Are, they are even They're a phenomenon. phenomenon. They're a cultural phenomenon for sure. Coming up on DBL, our interview with Big Brother host Julie Chen Moonves. She dishes about my time on the show as a house guest and more. And Super Bowl winning quarterback Matthew Stafford is talking about his reaction to a photographer falling. What did he have to say? Well, stick around and find out. Closed captioning provided by... but I want to hold my thoughts. I want to hold my thoughts. Tell us, is that purple you said? Yeah. What, is that Don't black? Don't you see? No. no. It's, I thought it's navy It's maroony, right? Yes, it is maroony. And is there another, what did I say? A burgundy? No, the name I said, John Jones. Jim, Jim Jones. Jones. Jim. Is there, isn't that the bad guy? Is he a bad guy? No, he's no, a cult Jim leader. Jones. And yeah. he's a rapper. Was yeah, I was going to say, I was thinking of the rapper. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was like Jim someone, Jim I was like, Kool -Aid. Yeah, Jim, Drink the Kool -Aid. that's where the phrase drink the Kool-Aid comes from. Well, that's Jim wonderful. Jones. But I just pulled <laughs> that no, no, no. They were Heaven's Gate. I was good. I could have went with John no. Johnson. Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> no, they it's like Jim Jones, and I was like, which one? I know, you said that. I was like, did I just like totally say something? Remember, you hear him drink it, you feed it to your children. No, I'm going to stick with my Ted's. Ted's my go-to fake name. I always go with Gary. Gary is a safe That's a good question. What is your fake name? If you're if you're using an example, you don't want to say somebody's name. Like, what's your default? Gary has always been mine, and Karen. But now Karen's been taken. Mm. I always did Gary and Karen in my that. improv class. He was Karen. Looking, he was looking directly at. I Erica. would al I would always say She's Mike. She's getting her makeup done. Yeah, mine is Mike. Mike. Like, let's just say Mike yeah. needs to yeah. have some water and go home. So, like that. <laughs> that would be my <laughs> Mike. Wow. Yeah, Karen's taken now. Whatever. Do what a strange. I wonder Someone, yeah. if and when we'll see the name Karen yeah, yeah. get popular again. I don't know. It's like Katrina, you know, yeah. Hurricane Katrina in nine. In but I think Katrina's still popular in like. Yeah, she's a 
like Soviet. Oh, she is. Russia. Russia. Yeah, in Russia, in Soviet. Yes. I think I'm still a lot more of, of a Tom, Dick, and Harry. Oh, you oh, do Tom, Dick, and Harry. Yeah. Old school. Yeah. Nice. That's like the 40s. Dude, Tom, Dick, and Harry's are like... How many? I mean, Tom. But Harrys might be are right. back now. Harrys are back. Yeah, because yeah. everyone's grandpa. You're named after your grandpa, so it comes cyclical. Like Evelyns are back. Ethels are back. Evelyns are definitely. Mm -hmm. back. Yeah, yeah. Back. my grandma's. Oh, a little walk down memory lane. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back. We have a couple of awkward apology stories for you. First up, LA Rams quarterback Matthew Stafford is apologizing after a photographer fell in front of him during the Super Bowl parade. I'm sure you saw this story. The photographer was about to take about to take a picture of Matthew and his wife when the photographer fell off the stage. Matthew reacts to the fall, then turns his back and walks away. Now, Matthew and his wife Kelly are speaking out. Kelly claims Matthew looked at her and said, Check her, please. Okay, so watch for that. Meantime, Matthew apologized for his reaction. Ooh, Let's listen. That obviously happened really quickly and suddenly and unexpectedly. And yeah, wish I had a better reaction in the moment. Um, I didn't apologize to her for that, but glad that you know, all in all, she's doing all right. So, one of those things that uh, try and train your reactions to be a little bit better next time. Okay, so that was his apology. Let's look at Matthew's mouth. Does it look like check her, please? Or oh my god! It we'll looks play, like oh my god. Play one oh more my time. god! But here we go. Let's oh just. Oh my god! <laughs> I mean, I, like, I'm not but you're melting you over it. No, do it one more time. Do it one more time. You don't well, want try to... it. Try it with. Okay, let's. I'll, I'll do uh, the other one. Yeah, do the other one. Check her. <laughs> please, no. <laughs> All right. How, no. Do we have one more? It doesn't. It doesn't work. I was just gonna put something about sandwich. Yeah. The weird thing I thought was interesting, he said that action needs to be trained, and that's the whole problem I have with this clip. Again, I'm not like crazy mad about it, but that action should be instinctual, mm. that you do this. And he's like, I guess I should tra train myself to have a better action. That weirds me out that your reaction is to run away, get rid of your wife's arm, and be like, oh my God. What if, that's I'm going to take his side, he's completely wrong, okay? He's completely wrong. I'm not sticking up for Matthew Stafford here, but... Listen, it was a long couple of days. He had been drinking, right? right? That's not an excuse. He's still wrong. But as an NFL football player, as a guy who played football, when someone gets hurt right. in front of you, people break their legs. They always fall down every play. You don't go and help them. They have trainers to come out and help you. Someone breaks their leg. Oh, man, Jim. Oh, you, there we go with the Jim reference again. <laughs> Jim, you all right? Oh, man, someone come check on him. You're not. I understand he should have reacted. Are you okay down there? What's going on? There should have been some sort of reaction. There was none. Right. That's obviously where he's know. wrong. Jeff. But I'm trying... <laughs> Is this as big of a deal? He paid for all the bills. Dude, he took care I, that's of it. That, look, he he won the Super Bowl the day before, right? He probably had done some drinking, probably some night drinking, Erica, some early in the morning drinking, and probably some early morning drinking because he won the Super Bowl. We saw him on the parade float. Chugging in 1942. Yes. That's right. So we Tequila. then cannot act like he's supposed to be a, an in-the-field paramedic when something happens. That's not his business. When we saw Tom Brady get off that boat and right. he, last year, if somebody had fallen in front of him, would we expect Tom to have rendered any help? We're not asking for Tom CPR. Would have, Tom would have stopped and tried to help. Tom, okay. grown Tom would have threw him, him to the Tom hospital. Tom would have still tried to help. Tom's we want, legs we were We don't want gone. CPR, but we want him just to look. I'm not asking for a paramedic. Yeah. We, I'm, yeah. I'm done arguing this because I think this is a human decency argument, yeah. and I don't feel like I'm with you. Out. I'm with you. We all agree on that. Okay, so we have another awkward apology from Rosie O'Donnell. Rosie spotted Nick Jonas and Priyanka Chopra, who she referred to as some one Chopra while out for dinner in Malibu. She then went up to the couple and had an embarrassing case of mistaken identity when she mistook Priyanka as being re related to self-help guru Deepak Chopra. Let's watch. So when I said, hi, Nick Jonas, you were great in Kingdom, and hi, I know your dad. She goes, you do? Who's my dad? And I'm like, Deepak. She's like, no, and Chopra is a common name. I was like, Woo! I felt so embarrassed. Didn't you think that Nick Jonas was married to Deepak Chopra's daughter? Am I the only one who thought that? All right, so Nick Jonas, I apologize. And to uh, the Chopra wife, I apologize too. Dude, what? Also, 
let's just be honest, just to make matters worse, Priyanka lost her father to cancer. So like all of this is bad. But to then apologize and not even give her a name is like, I think worse than mistaken her identity, which is a mistake that she probably made honestly. Why, why not know her name? It was strange. I, I, Am I wrong? I, Am no, I, I feel sensitive? like the first half of her apology was something that everybody can kind of get on board with. Like, oh, I made an assumption that that right, was like your mom or your mistake. sister. But then the second part just seemed like, yeah, I messed it up. What do you want? And I, I think she, it, it almost made, like you said, it almost made it worse. Either don't say anything or do the research to kind of make sure that you're talking about the right people. Because she clearly just made a fool of herself and then kind of doubled down on it in a weird way. It's like you meet one person from India, their last name is Patel, and then all of a sudden yeah. every Patel is <laughs> is related. And it, like, it's it's not overtly racist, right. but it's covertly racially insensitive. Totally. So the idea that she would issue an apology and double down on not giving Priyanka the respect right. that she deserved as an independent person um, is problematic. Yeah. But also, I can understand how Rosie O'Donnell has that type of attitude where it's like, yeah, 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 it happened, whatever. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't uh, condone it, but that's what she did, and I think it was a mistake. It was disrespectful to me, I agree too. Malibu problems. Coming up on <laughs> DBL, Julie Chen Moonves gives us a behind the scenes look at Celebrity Big Brother ahead of tonight's finale. Very exciting. We all know that movement. Americans have received three stimulus checks from the federal government since 2020. And one of the most frequently asked questions we get at Verify is whether we'll get a fourth check. So far, Congress hasn't approved one. But this video on Facebook with more than 45,000 views claims President Joe Biden signed an executive order to distribute more stimulus money. So let's verify. Did President Biden tell Americans they would receive a new round of stimulus payments? Our sources are the White House Press Pool, the White House, and the Internal Revenue Service. The Post includes a video with Biden supposedly making the announcement on a news station. Some people in the country will start seeing those direct deposits in their bank accounts this weekend. But Verify found this is what Biden actually said in the clip. We can create an environment that raises the standard of living around the world. The real video is from last November, when the president spoke at the COP26 climate summit in Scotland. This is proven by the presence of the UK and UN flags in the background and the logos for the conference on the podium. Here are both videos playing in sync with each other. The fake video loops a portion from the real video and President Biden's lips match the audio in the real clip. So the video posted on Facebook is fake. It was manipulated to sound like President Biden. The wording of the purported audio was actually said by White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki in March 2021. Some people in the country will start seeing those uh, in those direct deposits in their bank accounts this weekend. The IRS confirms on its website that the government only sent out three stimulus checks and there is no fourth check. So, no, President Biden never told Americans they would receive a new round of stimulus payments. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. You know, we've been chatting all about Lamar's love for Chloe K, which he confessed during his celebrity Big Brother eviction. And Julie Chen Moonves listened, listened and weighed in on our conversation with her thoughts, as well as my Big Brother gameplay. Check it out. Please welcome Julie Chen Moonves. Hey. So, Julie, I don't know if you heard us talking about Chloe and Lamar, but obviously Lamar was very transparent during Celebrity Big Brother. So, how, when, after he got evicted, and he tells you that he hopes to see Chloe soon, do you think that Big Brother could rekindle Chloe and Lamar? And are you rooting for them? Well, for the record, I am rooting for them. Aww. I was listening. Erica, I think you have an excellent point because I was just having this very same debate this morning with my glam squad. And uh, for the record, my makeup artist and I are like, oh, we want them to get back together. And my hairdresser, who is, she's a little bit younger than me and my makeup artist, she was like, no, no, <laughs> you can't do that to her. Very much saying what you were saying, Erica. So, Big I Jeff, 
oh. had a very big good point, which was <laughs> when you are sober, you have to make amends. And I think he is realistic enough to know that he wants to take one step at a time, first make amends, and then let the Lord lead the way, Ooh. and whatever will be, will be. That mm. is, okay, Jeff's feeling pretty good right now. I feel good. Back. I feel yeah. good. I'm also having, like, PTSD, Julie, because when I talk to you through a screen, it's usually in the Big Brother house, <laughs> and you're giving us some uh -oh. kind of bad news. <laughs> house guests. There, that's I mean, it. anchor people, come into the studio right now. Right. Oh, you're yeah. all evicted. I'm kidding. <laughs> Julie, speaking of Jeff, okay, when you think of Big Brother's very own big, Jeff Schroeder, what what comes first to your mind? Just how he was our first male America sweetheart. Aww. He was someone that was like, you know, with those big blue eyes, you know, everybody kind of had a crush on Jeff. It wasn't just Jordan. And we just loved his um, raw honesty and, and like pure heart. And he was, you know, the hero that everyone was kind of rooting for. Aww. And you let us down, Hefe. <gasps> Why is that? I have two kids with Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> you won, you lost Big Brother, but you won in life. Yeah. So I was just kidding. And you, I you did great. I saw your beautiful boys. Aww. I saw them on Instagram with your beautiful Jordan. Thank you. You did she, win. She says hello, and I want to say hi to your glam team. Julie, I could talk to you all day. I want to thank you first and foremost. 12 years ago, we met, right? And where I've came from that moment on Big Brother, I met my wife, my two beautiful kids. Julie, you are an extreme part of my success, and I really, really look up to you, and I want you to know that. Jeff. Thank you. No, you get back what you put out. And you know what, Jeff? You always will have a special <laughs> spot in my heart because when I went on your little interactive show in like the closet of That's like, <laughs> you know, CBS Television City, you're like the only person who like, you, it was so genuine. You gave me this like, I love this polyester HOH robe. We gave you an <laughs> HOH robe. So when you're in HOH, you're the head of a house and you get a robe, obviously fitting the first interview I did with Julie, we gave her that robe not knowing you would even keep it. <laughs> That's really awesome. It's so threadbare. <laughs> it's like my favorite snuggy wuggy. I have other robes that I've been gifted that are probably, you know, a little bit more expensive. <laughs> this is the go to. That was just the beginning. I, always, I, I gotta get you a better robe. But Julie, <laughs> let's get back to the interview. I, I just wanna say I love you and the show, how much you guys did for me. I want you guys to know how much I really do love you. But a lot of people, especially in our studio, they wanna know from Julie Chen, what does it take for a player to impress you and who is the best player, do you think, in your eyes of all time? Oh, that's a good question. Oh, I can't pick my favorites, but I will, of course, setting aside you and Jordan, but I will say that Jordan was unique in that she showed the world that you can play on an honest, clean, good game and win it. However, that being said, I have seen people, you know, lie, steal, beg, borrow, uh, lie to your face, charm their way to the finish line, i.e. Will Kirby. Ooh. I've seen people float their way because they didn't really do much, but they had a great time in the summer and then they were the lesser of two evils and win. And I've seen people, Rachel Riley, she, I admire so much because she had the whole house against her. She, it was like her against everyone else. And she was winning when it was time to win. And she really turned things around. She won. If you stepped away from your hosting duties, can me or Jeff host? <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. I think so. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, if I get the sniffles or God forbid I get a positive COVID result this summer and, and they need someone to step in, I'm calling I'm calling either you, Al, or you, Jeff. <laughs> okay? Because you, you asked. You're humoring me on that, but yes. It's down to the two of us. You don't ask, we'll you don't out. get. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much, Julie, for joining us today. DVL Nation, you can catch the finale of Celebrity Big Brother tonight. We'll be right back. Thanks, Julie. Thank you. Promotional consideration is brought to you by COVID-19 doesn't discriminate based on who you are or where you're from. There are an estimated 10 million unauthorized immigrants living in the United States. 
Following the federal government's announcement to make 500 million free rapid tests available for people in the U.S., Verify viewer David S. asked if unauthorized immigrants living in the United States can also request the free test. So David, let's verify. Our sources are the White House, USPS, Cindy Benavides, national CEO of LULAC, the League of United Latin American Citizens, and Dr. Cameron Webb with the White House COVID-19 response team. According to the White House, the free rapid COVID tests are available to anyone with a residential mailing address in the U.S. USPS is delivering those tests to homes across the country. To order an at-home test, you need to provide your name and address on the USPS website. Cindy Benavides is the CEO of LULAC, a Hispanic civil rights organization. LULAC partnered with the Department of Health and Human Services to create Junto, Sin Podemos, a program to increase awareness about the tests. The name and address are not shared with any departments or agency it's specifically so that every community member in the U.S. Uh, can access tests from to their home. During a Junto event with Dr. Cameron Webb from the White House COVID-19 response team, Webb confirmed that unauthorized immigrants living in the United States can and should request the tests without fear. Often there's questions about immigration enforcement or things along those lines, and, and this information is not being shared for those purposes at all. So we can verify, yes, unauthorized immigrants living in the United States are eligible to request the free rapid COVID-19 tests. With your Verify, I'm Ariane Day Till. By the end of the year, wireless carriers like AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile will have completely shut down their 3G networks to make room for faster 5G ones. And each company has a different deadline for what's called sunsetting. First up was AT&T, which completely shut down its 3G network today. So let's verify, why are carriers shutting down 3G and how could it impact your life? Our sources are the Federal Communications Commission, AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile. Let's start with why this is happening. According to the FCC, mobile carriers have to shut down their older networks to free up space, bandwidth as it's called, and make room for faster signals like 5G. So let's talk timeline. As we mentioned, AT&T shut down its 3G today. T-Mobile will be next, shutting down on July 1st, and Verizon by December 31st. So here's the big question, how might this impact your life? Well, according to the FCC, when carriers shut down their 3G networks, some items might stop working. That includes medical alert devices, older fire and burglar alarms, crash prevention systems in cars, also breathalyzers, ankle monitors, older tablets, and some smartwatches. Now that was a lot of information, so we've put the FCC's guide about this transition and links to each carrier on our website and if you want to check it out, just text the word VERIFY to this number, 202-895-5599. We'll send it right to your phone. With your VERIFY, I'm Evan Kozlov. It's time for a healthcare update sponsored by Go Health. Citrus fruits have high levels of vitamin C and antioxidants that are natural cold and flu fighters. With cold and flu season at its peak, now is the perfect time to pick and peel. Go Health makes health insurance easy. Call 1 800 650 2534 or visit gohealth.com. See you tomorrow. Pick and peel. Mm -hmm. pick Mandarin and peel. season. <laughs>